Spotlight on Frazee is sponsored by these community-minded businesses and organizations. United Community Bank, an independent, family-owned and operated bank committed to empowering customers to achieve their financial goals. Member FDIC. Frazee Family Foods, what a hometown grocery store should be. Friendly staff, family-owned and a wide variety of groceries to fulfill your needs. Welcome to Spotlight on Frazee. I'm your host, Hank Ledke, and I'm here today at Firefly Fields Youth Ranch. That was a mouthful for me. But uh, uh, I'd like to introduce Emily Mingo, who's the director, owner, operator, president, and a m bunch of other things here in, in uh, labor at Firefly Fields. Hi, Emily. Yeah. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Sorry. Great. Great. Um, so where did, where did all this start from? How did you get to uh, out here by Long Lake? <laughs> well, I grew up in Vergas. Yeah. Um, I went to school in Detroit Lakes in Perm. Um, I started going to college for agriculture, education, and equine science. Um, I knew that I wanted to do something with kids and horses and um, an education, and I really didn't know where to take that. Um, but then God had kind of placed a special... I don't know, desire on my heart to um, to check out this this place in Oregon that um, starts kind of other similar ministries that they do with mentoring kids and in using horses. Um, a friend of mine had had told me about it, and I felt this calling to pursue it. And when I went there, it really solidified um, where to take my education goals and what I wanted to do. Um, so following that, in the summer of seventeen, we bought the place out here on Long Lake and um, got some horses. We already had a couple, but added to that, started spending time with um, with kids in the area, I guess, um, for the most part, like cousins or nieces and nephews right away and friends' kids. And then April of 2018, we decided to um, incorporate as a nonprofit, 501c3, and then in the last couple of years, really just took off. So, uh, what part of Oregon were you in? Bend, Oregon. Okay. Um, so you're on the east side of the hills there, kind of. Yeah. Uh, and, and on the <laughs> west side of the Rockies. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the place out there was called Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch, and mm -hmm. they've started hundreds of other organizations that are really similar and just focusing on mentoring kids and using horses and um, as a faith-based. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting here. And uh, and so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's beautiful out here today. Corn's growing, everything else is happening, you know, but it's interesting. How many how many years were you out in Oregon? I was just out there for, for a week. About. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did a information clip. Do you want, sorry? Oh, hang on. Okay, <laughs> um, so we just went out for an information clinic. It basically gave us kind of the nuts and bolts of, of starting something similar. And they just said, this is what we do. Here's how we did it. It worked well for us. Here's what didn't work well for us. And take it and make it your own. And that's kind of what I did. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's something uh, kind of totally different for this area, you know, that uh, dealing with the animals and and everything like that. And when did how old were you when you started riding? When I started, I was riding um, <laughs> ever since I could walk. I guess my parents always had a couple horses, and they would just plop us up there on the saddle with us. And um, out of all my siblings, I guess I was the one that definitely <laughs> took to it the most. They always kind of got scared if my dad would run or something, and I was always begging my dad to go faster. So. Um, I've had a passion for horses and a love for them since I could remember, so. Well, that, that gives you quite a background, you know, to start with, you know, especially when you're, you got horses for pals when you're kids, you know, it makes a big difference. It does. And, you know, if I can share that with someone, you know, not all the kids, it's not always about the horses for some of these kids, you know, some of them really like spending time with the dogs or other ones just want to be outdoors and don't get that experience to spend time in a country setting, in a ranch setting, and, you know, hopefully we can get out to the lake and then add that, too. It's, I mean, most of our kids do want to spend time with the horses, but it's not always about that for all of them. Well, and you talk about dogs. How many dogs do you have? <laughs> we have two German Shepherds and three Golden Retrievers. 
So, five. <laughs> and how many horses right now? We have a pony and six, seven other horses. Seven horses and a pony. Yep. <laughs> we added two of them this summer. Um, the friend of mine that had kind of encouraged me to go to Crystal Peaks, um, she had been starting a nonprofit youth ministry ranch as well. Um, and she had had two, a few rescue horses, and um, she ended up passing away. But her husband held on to, held on to the horses, and he re recently just gifted me one this summer that um, we really are excited to be able to use in our program and carry on that part of our legacy with it. We're going to take a break here, and we'll be right back with Emily Mingo and the Fly Firefly Fields Youth Ranch. Spotlight on Frazee is sponsored by these community-minded businesses and organizations. The City of Frazee and Frazee Events Center, featuring a 5,000 square foot room, a built-in stage and a full service bar, perfect for a multitude of events. Call or click to book your event. Welcome back to Spotlight on Frazee and here we are at Firefly Fields Youth Ranch with Emily Mango. Uh, and we've talked about kind of how she got here and let's talk a little bit what do you do now here with the kids and and uh, and uh, and your mentorship? I go let you have, hold it. Hold Thanks. It <laughs> okay. So basically, our main focus of our program or organization is mentoring kids. Um, we really want to target the disadvantaged ones that normally wouldn't have the opportunity to be involved in something like this or get to spend time with. Um, with animals in this kind of a setting. So um, for the most part our kids that come out are 5 to 18 years old. They kind of come out on a weekly basis and spend time in a 90 minute roughly session um, where the kids will help us for the first like half hour. They'll help doing a ranch chore. They'll feed the horses or the dogs or or clean out a stall or pick the pick rocks for our garden that we're building. This Most of this came from kids helping me with that. Um, That's great. <laughs> it is. They were like never picked rocks before, so it was fun. It was interesting. Um, and and then the, after the 60 minutes, they get to do whatever they want. You know, if th a lot of them want to have a riding lesson, or they want to spend time with the dogs, or do a craft, or hopefully a lake activity soon. Um, so we just want to spend time one on one with them and just really help build their confidence by doing something like that. Um, teach them life skills, responsibility, um, you know, dedication and ownership. And because the kids that come out and pick the rocks for the garden, they said, Mom, look, at I built that garden. You know, so um, that's a lot of what we do. We hope to build a relationship with them over the course of the summer. Um, through those weekly sessions or as often as they can come out. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are disadvantaged in some way. That's kind of who we aim to target. But we also really believe that any kid can benefit from this. Um, so by disadvantage, some of them can have special needs or low income or, or foster children, you know, it's or emotional behavior disorders. Um, well, animals are great for dealing with that. Oh, yeah. So, you know, to have an animal that you can, that is uh, so trusting to uh, relate to the person. Mm -hmm. That's what, I mean, I guess I found is that they're really therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean always riding, but horses and dogs are very intuitive, quiet animals for the most part. I mean, I guess the dogs can get a little <laughs> rowdy, but, you know, the horses, there's just something about them that they really, really pick up on people's emotions. And um, I guess for me, I used to mentor my foster siblings using the horses, and I noticed that they couldn't focus on all the other crap going on in their life when they're worried about a 1,200-pound animal and what their next move is going to be. You know, so it's kind of that break for them to just let go of everything else and live in the moment and, and really have to trust something. So... I look around here and it's just beautiful around here and the idea that you're going to eventually you know access the lake which will make it very interesting too like I said you know swimming with horses and dogs is a lot of fun oh yeah for sure it's I'm oh, sorry um 
we have we have a lot of plans for the future um, right now it's kind of adding more volunteers and mentors to kind of pick up the slack so that we can mentor more or also take on more kids you know we we have a lot that come out here already you know about 10 to 12 probably this over the summer but that's just with me as as the main mentor and so to be able to add others and reach that many more kids will, will be great how many people do you have helping you out here then right now um well it varies um my mom is an awesome help she um she lives on the other side of Vergas and she uh she helps with my daughter a lot um my boyfriend Alex is out here all the time he's kind of my handyman he uh put up most of our fencing so far and um he really helps keep it operational <laughs> so well you know you need that you need the help you need all that and then uh so how do you finance this well um we don't charge anything for the kids to come out it it we don't want to be able to cut off the ones that really need it so 90 percent of it is probably donations um just from local people that believe in what we do um, another 10% I would say is from organizations like the Frazee Lions Club um, or um, or grants you know that we apply for and and receive but that's it well it's a big project you know and I'm very happy that you've been able to do something like this and it's amazing that you're doing this and so if they want to get a hold of you Emily how do they get a hold of you um, well, we uh, we keep our Facebook page updated regularly. You can contact us through there, Firefly, Firefly Fields Youth Ranch. It's even a mouthful for me sometimes. Um, or Firefly Fields Youth Ranch at gmail.com. Okay. You know, and, but God, it's great out here. It's uh, peaceful. I hear the some crickets and probably some frogs out in the distance little insects here and there and watching the horses go around i should stay here i need a place like this to come to <laughs> thanks for being on the program emily you're welcome thank you and bless you bless you too <laughs> and so remember pet the dog hug the kids kiss the wife and wave at the neighbors the next person you wave at could be your next best friend and we'll see you next week on spotlight on Frazee.